dictator, bent on rebuilding an empire, will never be able to ease the people's love of liberty. Brutality will never grind down the will of the free. And Ukraine, Ukraine will never be a victory for Russia. Never. President Putin, President Putin is confronted with something today that he didn't think was possible a year ago. The democracies of the world have grown stronger, not weaker. But the autocrats of the world have grown weaker, not stronger. One year into this war, Putin no longer doubts the strength of our coalition. But he still doubts our conviction. He doubts our staying power. He doubts our continued support for Ukraine. He doubts whether NATO can remain unified. But there should be no doubt. Our support for Ukraine will not waver. NATO will not be divided, and we will not tire. Next year, I will host every member of NATO for our 2024 summit in the United States. Together, we'll celebrate the 75th anniversary of the strongest defensive alliance in the history of the world, NATO. And Optics are just terrible that Biden is spending this time um, abroad with greater concern for uh, for the plight of the people in Ukraine, which is not to say it isn't a plight, and we're being very generous with our support. Um, and also, I was watching uh, I was watching CNN and MSNBC last night. They've just they've been fawning over this visit. They've just mm. been so proud of him mm. for what he's doing and. Man, it, it is going to be really hard to to rebut those charges of indifference to the plight of the working class American. You can't, because look, I understand that these trips are scheduled in advance. I understand wanting to do something around mm -hmm. the one-year anniversary. But the train derailed almost three weeks ago, mm -hmm. and there was ample time to do a visit before going to Ukraine. There was time to signal an intention to do a visit at least immediately after coming back from Ukraine and Poland. Um, there was an opportunity for Joe Biden to say, I regret that I wasn't able because of my schedule to be there sooner, but I'm sending X, Y, and Z person, whether it's Kamala Harris or some other member of the administration that would at least hold that space until later. He could even recognize that he values the fact that other politicians, including people on the other side of the aisle, are willing to go there because it's mm -hmm. an important crisis. This isn't a partisan issue. And if J Donald Trump's uh, presence is going to be helpful there, good. I'm glad we need to pull together as Americans and meet this moment. But this kind of void that he's created, where he's on the other side of the world, and there are people in East Palestine articulating their desire for his presence and arguing that it's not just that he's not here, but that the response hasn't been sufficient, that the FEMA response hasn't been sufficient, that they've been ha being told mixed messages by the EPA that they feel like they can't trust. All of that together is, I think, concretizing a narrative that was pre-existing that the government is insufficient and, in, from a conservative point of view, um, not worth having at all. And, and while these things, the diplomatic visits, are scheduled in advance, you can change them. We, cha we yes. didn't. Uh, Blinken decided not to visit after you know the spy balloon uh, shenanigans. Um, Biden, frankly, usually has better political instincts than this. Uh, he'll, the, the fatal mistake of the Hillary Clinton campaign was not visiting states like Pennsylvania, Michigan, Michigan. Ohio, et cetera, enough. Uh, particularly Pennsylvania and Michigan. And here he is. This is an opportunity to visit um, a, a, a Rust Belt working class, deeply red, but a, you know, a different kind of, of red um, than, uh, than you know, historic, people who were in a Democratic coalition yes. before. And by the way, it's not just about pulling votes in this particular yeah. town. I mean, the town has 
5,000 people in yeah. it. They're important because they're lives that are being affected by a horrible crisis, not for electoral reasons, but the whole country is looking. Yeah. And it's about what he's modeling, what his, his expectations and priorities are that he's modeling here. And we know, moreover, look, I have a lot of criticisms for Biden, but he's good in these kind of situations. Mm -hmm shaking hands, talking to people empathetically, relating his own experiences, talking about his own, you know, roots in a working class, blue collar, Rust Belt part of the country. Donald Trump is not great one-on-one -on -one no. in these kind of situations. You know, he's a germaphobe. He doesn't, he's, you can tell that he doesn't really want to touch <laughs> he's people. He's entertaining. <laughs> sure, yes, absolutely. Yes. Um, but in the interpersonal, so if they were yeah. both there, if they both had a chance to you know, have that personal personal experience with the people affected, I think it would inert a Biden's benefit. So again, it's just another reason why it's frustrating that at this point, at least, he hasn't taken advantage of that. Well, let's take a listen to what former President Trump had to say. And even now you have a president going to Ukraine and you have people in Ohio that are in desperate need of help. And I was very proud to say that I announced I was going to Ohio. You know, FEMA said we're not going to give him anything. The Biden administration said we're not going to give him anything. And then I announced I'm going. Please sit down. Yeah, go ahead. Sit. We'll be here for a while. What do we have to do? What do we have to do? But they weren't going to get anything from FEMA. They weren't going to get anything from anybody. And then I announced I'm going. And FEMA said, oh, we'll give you whatever you want. Everybody's throwing it at him now. And you know what? I'm happy about that. That's good. We're going to go on Wednesday. But as soon as we announced we were going, the money started rolling in. But it's not supposed to be that way, is it? Yeah, so my understanding now is FEMA is sending a team. Um, there was some question of whether that was going to happen previously. My reading of the situation, I could be wrong, but my reading of it is that it's at, it was a genuine question about whether FEMA would make a positive difference. And also, I don't, frankly don't want to shift the responsibility of dealing with this crisis from uh, an amorphous federal agency, fr from the train company to an amorphous federal agency. The train company is responsible. They should make right with anyone who was harmed by this, with any pollution that results from it, with any people who have to leave their homes or later medical conditions. They're responsible. That's if you you do the you, yeah. you do the mistake you make up for it. So I think what Trump is kind of capitalizing on and pointing to is that uh, apparently just hours after saying that he did not expect uh, FEMA to show up in East Palestine, Ohio Governor Mike DeWine then confirmed that the government that the FEMA would show up, and that that is being read as kind of a flip flop that was provoked by Donald Trump. That's how he's characterizing it at the very least. Uh, apparently, previously they had said that FEMA doesn't typically show up where the issue is. Um, uh, sorry, here's, here's a quote. Although FEMA is anonymous with disaster support, they're most typically involved with disasters where there is tremendous home or property right. damage, as opposed to this kind of right. more uh, environmental right. damage. And if the people need money, they need money. They don't need federal agent. You know, what are the right? If they need support, financial support, they need to be made whole. It's, it's different than mopping up an oil spill or something like that.